Hello and welcome to this segment of On the Cocktail. I am your host Chad Samith, and today we are honored to have some of the movers and shakers, or some of the, the new vibes, the new tones of, of the Cambodian American uh, scene. My name is Laura Mam, I Cambodian American singer songwriter. Jim Nipso, my name is Bo Chan Hui, a singer songwriter from Oakland, California. I am Barong from Indra Devi. You want you to tell us just a little bit about what kind of music you do, what kind of led you into the music scene, and kind of where you are now for a little bit. I actually just started as a singer songwriter on YouTube and. Um, I actually then joined my band, The Like Me's, and we started doing um, some rock music, and we started covering some 60s Cambodian songs as well, and doing our own modern twist on it. This year, I've just started again going back to my acoustic singer-songwriter roots and um, putting out some new stuff this year. Awesome. What's so. your I sort of grew up in a musical family. My father was a musician. Music was always in the household. and. I took to it, was in a few bands here and there, and finally in 2009 decided to do a solo artist career, and um, it's been a great journey in the last four years, released a few albums, and hoping to do more. <laughs> <laughs> so I just have one question, man. What the heck are you? <laughs> good question, Chad. <laughs> I am Barong, the good Lion King of the jungle, and my bandmate, is Rangda, who is the evil witch of the jungle in Balinese mythology. So Barong and Rangda are like good and evil, and they're locked in this eternal battle dance, like this eternal struggle that keeps the universe in harmony, which pretty much describes our working relationship. We play a style called Jangala, which is Sanskrit for jungle. Obviously our music is rooted in the drum and bass jungle world, but with a unique Southeast Asian spin on it, hence the Sanskrit Jangala. I want to kind of take a step back to Cambodia's history in music. The music scene was very vibrant, very lively, and, and really at its peak during the 1960s in Cambodia. How do you feel about how Cambodia's history in music then, to kind of what took place after the war, to kind of where we are now, how do you feel that our, our community and, and our culture has shifted? And what kind of changes do you think we've seen? We had such an incredible scene in the 60s. And so many of our generation and you know the young generation that had parents that are refugees came here are missing so much of that information like it only because of YouTube and now this you know ability to share information do we have this chance now to rediscover our past so I think that's why you see this you know and all of us collectively you see this returning to the music all three of us have actually taken old songs and you know retranslated them to our new identity and the new genres of today because we want to honor the past we want to remember the past we want to honor the people that were lost and we want to say your death was not in vain we remember you it's going to live the culture is alive and it's not going anywhere and one of those artists being for me i love fan fan ron she was kind of like the wild one right, you know right, i think i think rosa Reisetia was like the popular one and yeah. fan ron was kind of just like out there yeah. like, <laughs> like willing to go crazy and, and you did a, re a remix of fan ron Right? Yeah. Um, what, what, what was that called? We did a cover of Spiral Monkey, and um, it was a really fun video where we kind of just we made the whole video about the old generation and the young generation reconciling and seeing mm -hmm. each other in mm -hmm. each other. Yeah, so. I remember watching the opening scene to that. The elder lady who's kind of had a reflection, oh, yeah. seeing a little bit of themselves yeah. in you, right? And right. then that connection, and then very cool, very very well crafted. Thank you. Bo Chan. Yes. We were in New York together. Yes. This yes. past April. Yes. And you're job. you're blowing things up and making all sorts of sound waves. <laughs> you blew the house up at at, at the Thank concert. You. How have things been since then? You, you've been it's been good. You know, I don't know what else I would do with myself if I wasn't making music. And and just to piggyback on what you know Laura was saying in your question, a lot of my music, I think I I like to focus a lot on refugee, immigrant, diaspora. For me, growing up, I was born in Cambodia. But raised in America, so I'm what you would call, you know, Generation 1.5. Mm -hmm. So things like Cambodia Town Film Festival or Season of Cambodia, I've waited my whole life for. <laughs> it's great to see, I think, that the voiceless generation, which I guess are our parents, we are now telling that story and moving it forward. And considering that for 38 years, a lot of the culture was lost, and I think right now it's so great because what we have is it's our moment to sort of create it however we want with shows like this. We are working on a new album coming out hopefully later on this year and a new music video. It'll hopefully raise a few more eyebrows when it comes out <laughs> as well. I, I, I would always like to encourage dialogue, whether it's a controversial piece or not, having dialogue I think is sort of what my goal as a musician right. is. Pushing that envelope a little bit. I always there. will. Yeah. I always will. How would you describe mm -hmm. your music? I'd, I'd consider mine as world music. My first solo album 
it's a very eclectic mix of songs. You know, the first half, I like to think of it as just songs that are based on observations that I have seen in the community in my background. I've worked in Oakland Public Schools, being from also o Oakland, an urban mm -hmm. environment as such that's a big melting pot of cultures. Mm -hmm. I really embrace that. A lot of my music embodies that. I think I, I would probably also describe mine as world music as, as well, but also very acoustic, and that's definitely my influence. A big focus for me is making sure to actually write music in Khmer. I had the good fortune of studying Khmer in anthropology and focusing on Southeast Asia when I was at UC Berkeley in, in college. My whole focus has been writing music in Khmer and making it so that it's not just English that's going to be representing us, so that we can also honor the old language as well and that we can cross over and go back to Cambodia and also express ourselves and find ways to have that dialogue with people in the homeland because I really strongly believe that the diaspora has so much to offer to the homeland and the homeland has so much to offer to the diaspora and if we were to bridge it and really take a chance to understand each other we have so much potential. And you're not exactly a stranger in Cambodia either. I mean, yeah. you're, you're kind of a big deal over there. I'm all right. um, you mentioned that you, know, you spent some time out there last year mm -hmm. and the reception that you had, what was that like? The reception was good. There were a lot of young Cambodians. Some of them feel that they're a little bit tired of copying, you know, the karaoke style. Mm -hmm. When I was younger, I thought karaoke was not a good thing, but now I see that it also it filled this wonderful void where Cambodia was desperate for music and needed something. Mm -hmm. But now we're at this age where Cambodia's economy is becoming no longer as devastated as it used to be, and the people, and especially the youth, are interested in expressing themselves, as you've seen in the elections as well, mm -hmm. and they're interested in having their own identity. K-pop is big out there and you know some American stuff is big out there. The reception was good because I think a lot of Cambodians are ready for us to have our own scene. Right. Have a mix of karaoke and then you know original music. And, and, and you mentioned how they, they would play your music like so many times a day for how, how long was it? Um, well when we came we, we got a sponsorship from Cellcard and um, CTN mm -hmm. and they played our music next to like Justin Bieber and K-pop <laughs> like it would come like you know every like 10, 10 minutes sometimes right. when we especially when we were there on tour. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. It's so it's great because you're making that connection you're strengthening that bridge between here yeah. and the States because when I was over there I felt like the sentiment was that there's a big absence of Americans mm. um, yeah. just interest or whatever it may be yes, and then yeah. you're kind of on that cusp of mm -hmm. building that relationship you right. know, and then hopefully more people following that route will kind of expand on that as well right. yeah yeah Definitely. awesome Thank you. and then mr. Moran <laughs> first of all I think I don't think I've ever heard anything like what you're doing <laughs> it's so different it's so I think it's I think it's brilliant I think it's innovative but what kind of a reaction have you had from the general public so far Chad the reaction has been really good it's cool that like when people get what we're doing, they really get it and they're really excited about it. And then for some people, they've just never heard anything like it before. I would say the majority of the reaction that we're getting are from kids in Cambodia. I think they're college students and high school students who are on YouTube and came across the video and uh, the reaction there has been really, really good. They're very excited by it. And a lot of Americans too, you know, who might be more familiar with drum and bass music, it's a totally new thing for them as well. We did a music video which helped illustrate what we're all about. So that's been a great way to reach a global audience that, you know, even 10, 20 years ago, an artist just starting out wouldn't have that opportunity. You, you mentioned, you know, those who kind of don't get what you're doing or as opposed to those who do get what you're doing. What do you mean by like, what, what are you doing? Well, I mean, a, there's a handful of people who, you know, see the video and say, oh, this is too bizarre. This is too out there. This is too scary or crazy. I actually take that as a compliment, frankly, because it's like, I'd rather that than, oh, this is too boring. I'll jump on the crazy train any day. <laughs> so. I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that the, you, you guys all share, because as up and coming artists, um, you're doing something that's in, in a large way unique all by itself, individually, collectively, because there's a reason why you have the audience that you do because we've never really quite seen that, at least not in, in, the, in, the, in the Cambodian community. Having said that, with this new kind of introduction, new wave of, kind of new flavors of music and so forth, um, what has your experience been with critics, as let's call them all, the haters, you know? <laughs> there, there's, there's some haters out there. Yeah. But what has, what has been some of the criticism and, and how have you dealt with that? You know, what's, what's been the response? It, it fuels me. One of the best comments someone wrote on one of the press pieces that came out was Rasta Satil would rise up from her grave and slap you for <laughs> destroying her song. <laughs> because of Chnap and Moy, the music video, what I did to it, the song structure and changing it up so much, I mean, it's all intentional. It's supposed to be 
something familiar that used as an agent of change. And that's what I wanted to do with Chinamo Rapamoy. And I also wanted to show the, the plight of the Khmer people, but also myself as a Khmer woman at the end of the video who finds her identity in this world. I've had a few that are just, just plain ignorant comments, but they make me want to do the work that I do even more. You're awesome for being so strong because sometimes those comments are like, oh my god. A lot of times YouTube is so anonymous that people just like project their themselves on you. It's like, wow, you had a bad day mm -hmm. and I was on the receiving end of that. For me in my experience, I write music, original music in Khmer. And I'm definitely, I'm, I'm born in America, I'm raised in America, and I've learned Khmer along the way. And I've studied it in, in college. I've gotten to a reading and writing level that I'm really happy with. And I, I, a speaking level that I'm happy with, an interviewing level that I'm happy with, but singing is a totally different thing. And writing and singing and, you know, there's a Khmer style of singing and there's an English way or an American way of singing. My mom is the writer of all my Khmer lyrics and it's oh, been wow. this wonderful, you know, pairing between the two of us so I can bring my music and she can bring her poetry and we have this wonderful thing that we share Very and cool. we bring it out to the world together. I struggle with her all the time on how to sing certain words. Like we have words like, you know, Brahim, like it's like, oh my God, you know. So a lot of the comments have been like, oh, you, you're not saying it right. You can't sing it right. You're not the way it should be. Right. At one point in the beginning, I was like, God, I need to learn how to do it correctly. I need to know how to sound more Khmer. But then after a while, I started speaking with my mom and my family and a lot of friends and things and even Khmer fans and things like that. They're like, no, you're American. You sing the way you sing because you are who you are. You can't make yourself more Khmer. You just are who you are and that's fine. Obviously, I'm still trying my best to make the pronunciation perfect so you understand what I'm saying. It's sometimes tough, but then it, again, like, like Bo Chan said, it's like fuel and it's like, okay, I want to do better. I want to make something that you would be happy with and Americans would be happy with and I would be happy with. It makes me work harder, I think, definitely. I think it's safe to say that the Khmer American diaspora experience is a very unique experience. Yes, right? And not mm -hmm. many people around the world can really relate or, or you know, mm -hmm. comprehend that. How much of that experience do you draw? Because as artists, in that exchange, in that creativity, you know, not all, not everyone's going to understand nor agree or something. They're going to project their views on you, and that's mm -hmm. that's normal. Yes. <laughs> but what would you say to those if they were to experience what you had experienced? How would you find the commonality? Like, what would you ask them to understand you as being a Khmer American? who went through this process of dual identity. Well, I think, I mean, like in Chambu uh, Napamoy, you know, at the end of my video, what we wanted to do is we showed a group of people from all walks of life mm -hmm. coming together, and they're all holding pictures of their lost loved ones. Even if you're not Cambodian American, you should be able to understand or share or empathize or have compassion for struggle in general. That's sort of how I kind of view music, you know, how to connect or relate to people that aren't part of the diaspora is just, well, let's look at other parts that are, like the idea that struggle, we all have this struggle and we can understand that by uniting as a group of people, regardless of where we're from, we all share a lot of similarities. So, Baran, the name of your group is Indra Devi. Where did that come from? What's the connection? So, Indra Devi was uh, one of the most prominent queens of the Angkorian Empire. She was one of the wives of Jayavarman VII, and uh, she was considered one of the most influential female figures of the kingdom, and it's believed that she was instrumental in bringing Buddhism to Angkor, which was a Hindu kingdom up until that time. We chose that name for the project because it was synonymous with ancient Cambodian royalty, and a lot of our music stems from old Cambodian music from the past. And we chose a, a female figure just because I think a lot of our music is inspired by female singers of the 60s, especially Rosario Satia, so it seemed to make sense. So as artists, you're on this cusp of, of this new era in the Cambodian uh, story, this new chapter in our people's history, and then being kind of like the trailblazers, so to speak, and, and the pioneers of this new era, what kind of advice would you give to our viewers who are looking at you like you, who, who want to become the next wave of artists and creative minds and so forth, from the lessons you've learned and, and from your experiences? Be fearless. You will always face criticism. You know who you are inside. What prevails in the end is the authentic you. Don't be afraid to explore various forms of self-expression, think outside the box, experiment. I think all of us and what we're doing is 
hoping to pass that on to the new generation, the younger generation. Totally agree with Bochan. I think that, you know, fearlessness is absolutely essential. And not to forget that there's so much joy you get out of making art. Sure, there's lots of criticism, as there is in all parts of life, but I think that with art you get so much more joy. Another thing I would say, especially to the Cambodian artists, wherever you are, in whatever country you are, I think you should realize that this moment in time is just so unique. We went through devastation, absolute devastation, and at this moment in time we have this very unique chance to redefine our identity together, individually, collectively. And I think historically, the future Cambodians long down the line will look back and say, okay, these were the roots that happened. This is where everything came from. I listened to this person, to this person, to this person. And it came down to me creating this art and whatever comes out of it. Realize that you're a part of that history and you need to make that history. I think there's something so beautiful about art in the sense that I think it, it provides a real sense of reconciliation to the past. I think the tribunals are very important, but I think when people translate their own reconciliation of what happened during the Khmer Rouge period, that is something beautiful, and that is something that the history books that will, will remember. Wow. Bodhan? Yeah, I agree with everything that Bochan and Laura said. I think if you want to be an artist and pursue art, find something you're passionate about. I mean, everyone has something that you are really driven by and feel very strongly about and it's in your heart because it's not going to be easy you're going to face a lot of opposition it's going to take a lot of work to get what you want and if you're not passionate about this thing then you know why go through that struggle that's it find what you're passionate about find your unique voice your unique signature and make the best of it and you will accomplish what you set out to do Spoken like true artists. And what's what's next for you guys? Where, how can we follow with what you're doing next? You know, I'm releasing my uh, new EP, my new solo EP, Meet Me in the Rain, in both English and Khmer, sometime in November, December time. And um, I will be touring Cambodia. I will do a small tour of the U.S. after as well. And stay in touch with me on Facebook and SoundCloud and YouTube. Best way to stay in touch. Awesome. Thanks. And you can link up with me, you know, all the social media sites, Facebook, <laughs> Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. Now, how do you spell your name? B-O-C-H-A-N. Awesome. Indradevi.net. <laughs> and we're actually putting together uh, a really cool theatrical live show that we're going to start gigging out hopefully November, December with a full band and ensemble. So we're very excited about that. So be sure to follow up with our new generation of artists and with what they're doing and support their, their ideas and, and, and their, um, their causes. Hopefully this will inspire another wave, another generation of Cambodians to come up and create and, and, and you know, innovate and inspire as they're doing here. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate your time in, in, in watching our show. And thank you guys thank you so, much. so much. And Akun and Chimdiapliya.